This is Fuse, your link to interactive entertainment. Hi, I'm Derek. Welcome to the first edition of Fuse. Hey, and I'm JC. Fuse is your connection to the world of electronic games. And for the occasion, we put together a great show. We went all the way to Japan to check out Sega's new system. Well, I did anyways. Yeah, well, I actually got to play the new Sonic game. And Legend of Zelda for Nintendo 64, even the new Tomb Raider. And we got the crazy crew from Game Informer magazine who will give us the okay on lots of cool new games. And we'll visit with The Crystal Method, this month's Celebrity Gamers. Very cool. Yeah. But first, here's Cool Derek with Fuse News. In the world of games, a revolution happens every couple years or so, and another one is upon us courtesy of SEGA. Sega's Dreamcast is storming onto the streets of Japan right now, and five new titles will be released surrounding the launch, including Virtual Fighter 3 and Sega Rally 2. Japanese players can also expect RPGs, sports, and wrestling games. But last but not least, the biggest game for Dreamcast is the triumphant return of Sonic the Hedgehog in Sonic Adventure. And I was on hand in Tokyo for Sonic's unveiling. Check it out. Fuse has hit Tokyo. Kaiyan Chu no Keitai Denma, Kaijo Nai de no. Hi, this is Derek. I'm in Tokyo, Japan, outside the Tokyo International Forum. All of these people that you see here, they're waiting for a chance to play the brand new game, Sonic Adventure, Sega's first game for its new format, Dreamcast. Now we're two hours away from the doors even opening, and yet there's already over 3,000 eager fans waiting for a chance to see what the future of gaming looks like. <laughs> I'm super, super excited. We're now inside the Tokyo International Forum, heading upstairs where everything's going to happen. Sonic Adventure, first time seen by human eyes. I mean, you know those people at Sega. They're not human. Excuse me, excuse me. D do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions about your, your new game? Get your programs here. This is going great, isn't it? This is great, yeah. Dude. Sonic and Dreamcast will be introduced in Japan on December 27th. Unfortunately, we in the U.S. will have to wait till next fall. When it does get here, Dreamcast owners will be able to use the console for internet and email right off their TVs with a web TV-like extra called Dreamflyer. More on Sonic later in the show. In other Dreamcast news, Capcom, creators of Resident Evil, the most popular PlayStation game of all time, 
will release a new version called Resident Evil Codename Veronica, specifically for Sega's new machine. In this Resident Evil installment, Claire Redfield journeys to Europe to find her brother. Capcom has plans to design other Dreamcast games, including Power Stone, a polygonal fighting game along the lines of Street Fighter EX. That small hatch on top of your Nintendo 64 does big things when the Nintendo 64 memory expansion pack is plugged into the system. The expansion pack, which adds an additional four megabytes of RAM to the N64, is available now. Retailing at a price of $29.95, the item will double the N64's current RAM specs. That means high resolution graphics. Unfortunately, the expansion pack doesn't do anything to enhance existing games, but only enhances games specifically designed for it. Turok 2 tops the list of games compatible with the expansion pack, but Perfect Dark, Nightmare Creatures, Rogue Squadron, and Quarterback Club 99 also utilize this new peripheral. Interact has also made it known that its very own RAM pack is finished, called Turbo RAM, a release to coincide with Nintendo's is likely. The rumors have been flying about how IDOS plans to buy California-based developer Crystal Dynamics. Well, now it's cold hard fact. The acquisition is worth $47.5 million and will bring some of the industry's best-known characters together under one umbrella. Most notably, Laura Croft and that crazy gecko Gex. IDOS has no plans to change the operations of the Crystal Dynamics studio or staff. The Crystal Dynamics lineup for 98 and 99 is still intact. Expect to see Gex 3, Deep Cover Gecko, and the highly acclaimed Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, in early 99. We'll have more details on Soul Reaver a little later. Midway, creators of the arcade football hit Blitz, is currently programming a new title featuring players and teams from Major League Baseball. Just like Blitz, Midway's baseball title is said to stretch the rules of baseball a bit. Expect to see some disturbing action when this game hits the arcades next spring. Yeah. Sorry WCW fans, but the Ultimate Warrior will not be a playable character in the upcoming N64 game, WCW NWO Revenge. THQ had apparently reserved a space for Warrior, but there were too many questions surrounding his allegiance. However, the game's producer did state that the Warrior could be appearing in upcoming WCW Nitro and Thunder games that are scheduled to release early next year. Stay tuned. Let's rock. Piece of cake. Who wants some? What is the G? The G is gossip in the gaming world, and Fuse has it for you. There may soon be action figures based on Konami's thriller, Metal Gear Solid. We hear that McFarlane Toys of Spawn fame will design the figures. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of Metal Gear Solid, Konami is hinting at a version for the Dreamcast. Rock on. Sony's still pretty silent about the PlayStation 2, but word on the street is that this new gaming machine will rear its head next spring. We'll see about that. After a three-game run, Crash Bandicoot creator Naughty Dog has given up on the Bandicoot. Mm. The dogs will put their attention towards other genres, but that doesn't mean you won't see another Crash game. A new developer is reportedly being sought. Waiting for an N64 version of Donkey Kong? Our sources tell us this big ape is on his way next year. We'll have to wait and see. In Future Shock, we profile games coming to you in the near future. Crash is back in Crash Bandicoot Warped. Follow Crash and Coco on their hardest adventure yet, this one featuring 3D jet ski and biplane levels. 
With an extra time trial feature, Crash Warped is one game you'll want to go back to again and again and again, starting in November from PlayStation. Our next game is a sequel, a sequel to Abe's Odyssey, called Abe's Exodus. It's very much like old SNES games as you attempt to solve puzzle screens. A feature called GameSpeak allows you to interact more realistically with other characters. Game Boy announces an end to squinting. That's right, Nintendo has brightened up the world of Game Boy with Game Boy Color. It's the same old Game Boy, but with the vibrant color screen, so you won't burn your eyes out trying to tell the difference between 20 different shades of gray. Game Boy Color will be in stores by Thanksgiving. When the first Game Boy debuted in 89, the first game available was the original Tetris. Appropriately enough, the first game for Game Boy Color will be Tetris DX. Still Puzzle Champ, but this time in 56 colors. It's amazing how Game Boy keeps evolving. Also in RPGs is an American attempt at the genre by Crave called Shadow Madness. But don't worry, it won't be too much of a departure. The main designer, Ted Woolsey, was extensively involved in the American translation of Final Fantasy II and III. The soul of hoops is back this year with NBA Live 99. For the first time, players on screen have movements and facial expressions accurate to their real-life counterparts. Through new artificial intelligence, characters even react realistically. You'd be able to draft an entire custom team or league. Whoosh! Two! South Park fans, rejoice! All your favorite South Park characters are in Acclaim's new South Park game for the N64, including Cartman, Kyle, Stan, Kenny, Chef, and the infamous Mr. Hankey. Hidey ho! The plot, uh, as if they needed one, centers around the mayhem caused by a comet heading towards South Park. Will they survive? Find out this holiday season on your N64. The legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, is like Metroid, Zelda, and Tomb Raider all rolled into one. In the sequel to the popular adventure game, Kane is now the villain as you become Raziel, a vampire and former underling of Kane. Ha ha ha. The game features some impressive artificial intelligence, along with numerous animation scenes. Expect Soul Reaver to hit stores early in 99. Turok 2 looks to be an improvement over the original. Utilizing the RAM pack, the game has higher resolution, so you won't see the polygonal graphics building in the distance or so much of that annoying fog. The game covers six different worlds and features the best weapons ever seen in a game. Bulletproof. Good thing I've been playing Siphon Filter, an action thriller for the PlayStation. You take the role of arms expert Gabriel Logan as he attempts to stop a group of terrorists with a strange and deadly biological virus. Expect tons of cool weapons, a huge 3D environment, and plenty of action when this game hits next spring. Twisted Metal 3 has been developed by a different creative team than its predecessor, but with realistic car physics and returning characters like Sweet Tooth, Spectre, and Shadow, things are looking up. Well, that's it for previews. Now, here's JC as we cover the scoop on three really big games. The inaugural game for Sega's new system, Sonic Adventure, has amazing resolution. The best yet in a game ever. Sonic and five other characters each have different adventures during the course of the game. The adventures overlap, detailing the release of chaos by Dr. Robotnik. The game has a multitude of levels, a rugged jungle, a Vegas-like city, a desert, the coolest thing about the levels is that certain areas are only accessible by certain characters. Sonic Adventure, the fastest and most detailed Sonic game yet, debuts in the fall of 99 when Dreamcast hits the US. Our next mega preview is for the latest sequel to the phenomenon that is Tomb Raider. That's right boys, Laura Croft is back again. This time she's seeking out a set of ancient artifacts that lay scattered about the earth. Players travel to India, Nevada, and the South Pacific. A mystery fourth level might just involve aliens, but we're not telling, and Laura isn't either. Tomb Raider 3 is structurally different from the previous games in the series. The levels are now non-linear and can be played in different orders. 
Laura will have many interesting vehicles to choose from, including a Jeep, a quad bike, and a canoe. Look for Tomb Raider 3 this November from IDOS for PlayStation. One of Nintendo's top titles is back, and it's about time. The Legend of Zelda, the Ocarina of Time. is the first Zelda game for the N64, and it might just be the greatest N64 game yet. A first ever simultaneous release in the US and Japan is planned for Zelda, and you should see it in store soon. The game itself is positioned to be everything you'd expect in an N64 game. Its many levels are obsessively detailed, and Link has every ability Mario ever had, plus a few. The fighting sections are much like Street Fighter in Link's ability to fight and move, and he doesn't even need a sword all the time to hold his own. In addition to all the levels you must conquer as Link, you must also travel through a vast overworld where time shifts from day to night as you walk. It could even take that long because the new Zelda will provide a 60 to 100 hour gaming experience. The puzzles of this game really reflect the original. And there are some fun bonus games like fishing and shooting your slingshot. Your rumble pack comes into play as well. But for how, you'll have to play Zelda yourself, which I'm sure you will. Here at Fuse, we're not about games all the time. Well, actually, that's not true. However, we are about seeking out cool people in the world of entertainment and getting their impressions on the world of interactive games. Recently, we had a chance to speak with Ken Jordan of The Crystal Method on the tour bus between gigs. He told us about electronic music, the effect of video games on the youth of America, and the use of The Crystal Method's music on PlayStation's Nitrous Oxide. He's this month's Celebrity Gamer. Fox Interactive is, is sponsoring the tour, um, and they make uh, N2O. The Fox dudes called us up in L.A., and they're big fans of the band, and they really liked our music. They really liked the album, and they had finished the game, and they had kind of contracted out someone to do music for the game, but it sounded like all like Pong, kind of like, it sounded like video game music, like, bing, 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 bing. So they called us up and they like asked us to come over to the Fox building to check out the game. They had just ran our CD, you know, through a stereo while we were playing the game. It just like really worked good. So it's just, you know, you're in a spaceship shooting bugs, you know. It's nothing too uh, detrimental to our precious youth. Our feeling about including live musicians in our live performance is kind of interesting because I mean, we've been playing live shows since like January of 95, and our concept has been the same pretty much from the beginning. If we did bring out a drummer and we try to teach him the drum parts that are on the record, right, there's no way in hell he's ever going to play it as well as I program the drums. He's not going to get those same sounds ever in a million years. So the truest representation of what we do is actually the way we perform live. We try, we try to, to make, make our, our records, records sound, sound like humans, humans made, made it versus, versus a machine made it or a computer made it or whatever. We use technology just to facilitate the best recordings we can possibly make. We don't use technology to write our music or to make our music. We're not out trying to preach. I mean, we really are just trying to make records that people really think sound great. And we're not trying to, like, win back our ex-girlfriend or anything with our song. <laughs> it's like, we want you to hear a song and, like, get goosebumps, sweat, throw up. And then, like, you know, have an orgasm all in once, every song. That's what we're going for. Our next segment, Code. Yeah, busy now. Shh. I'm trying to beat this level of games. Why don't they just put the codes in the box? That's what this segment is all about. <clears throat> Our next guest has a dream and an alias. Known only to us as Mario Zeldenstein, he was apparently once a talented game designer, but his real passion has always been to make all video game codes available to gamers everywhere. Alas, he perceived himself as a dangerous reactionary, and much of his research materials burned in a mysterious fire, the actual existence of which we were unable to confirm. To continue his courageous fight against what he terms the godless hordes, he has come to Fuse to let viewers in on the best strategies. 
Here with this month's Code Breakers is Mario Z. Derek, JC, are you there? I'm having a hard time hearing you, but before I go, here's some of the coolest codes for the newest game. I'm Batman and Robin for the PlayStation. Just enter this code to the title screen to get invincibility. Remember, there are no codes available that will actually make this game any good. Just press L1, R2, R1, L2, select, X, and circle in order. On Tenchu Stealth Assassins, to fully restore your health, just press start to pause the gameplay, then press left, left, down, down, square, square, triangle, square, and you'll have fully restored health. For level select, select a character, then hold R2, and press left, left, down, down, square, square, triangle, square. Press down on the joypad to choose your mission. For more types of items, go to the item selection screen, hold R1, and press left, left, down, down, square, square, triangle, circle. To increase your item inventory, go to the item selection screen, hold L2, and press left, left, down, down, square, square, triangle, X. On Mission Impossible for the Nintendo 64, just enter these codes at the Mission Selection screen. If you did it right, you'll hear the phrase, ah, that's better. Remember, the Z button is on the back. For Hot Shots Golf, to unlock all the characters and the courses, there's a really tough code. First, make sure there are no memory cards in the system and a second controller plugged in. Now, take controller 2 and hold all the top shoulder buttons, that's the L's and the R's, simultaneously before the title screen appears. While holding the four shoulder buttons, go to the title screen. Immediately after the flash happens, press up, up, down, up, left, right, right, left, up, up, down, up, left, right, right, left. You have to do it really quick as the Hot Shots logo is bouncing in and you have to finish the code before it stops. You should hear a sound confirming that you did the code right. On GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64, to get all 64 multiplayer characters, enter the following very long code. Now this code can be entered anywhere, but we do recommend entering it on the character select screen with Moonraker Elite highlighted. Go, go, go. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, Mario. I sure hope no one finds out where he is. We may need him for next time. <laughs> now, this is the part of the program where we listen to Code Boy complain about this and that. Code Boy is the hacker for Game Shark, and in each edition of Fuse, Code Boy is going to present the latest codes for Interact's Game Shark enhancement device. Did you let him out of his cell yet? All right. Here's Code Boy. Howdy. I'm Code Boy. Guess I'm stuck talking to you as some kind of penance, so let's just try and get through this in one piece. You guys send me tons of email every day requesting codes for all the new games. And I realize that none of you are as good as I am at games, but I am a paid professional. Some people don't even wait for the game to come out before they decide that they need help. Now, I love hacking codes for most of the games that come out, but what I do only takes a few hours. The programs that did the real work on the game spent months, sometimes years on these titles. After all that work put into a game, it may be worth having a look. Just maybe the game's enjoyable the way it is. So, play the game at least once without any codes, the way it was meant to be played. And then 30 seconds later, go back in with the game shark and wreak havoc on whatever creature took you out moments after the opening credits rolled for the first time. All right, now I guess it's time for a demonstration of the game shark in action. If you have a PlayStation and you don't have Tenchu, well, anyway, there's the code at the bottom of the screen. Write it down, I guess. Now you can carry a limitless amount of throwing stars, grenades, fire scrolls, and whatever else you want. See, no carry limit. It just makes sense. Okay, you'll notice that there are no codes on the screen right now because I don't feel like putting them up. These codes will be in the big list, so get off my back. With the codes running, you'll start the game with every weapon that's available, and you can select them at the press of a button. You can also restore your health real easy-like. Finish the game for yourself, like I said earlier. It just makes it too easy. Here's some new golden eye codes. Well, 
Here you go, now you can be completely lazy. All your objectives are complete when you enter the game. You're invisible to the people that want to kill you. You can walk through doors, you know, instead of actually opening them. And you can access every level without doing a thing. There, now you can just go around killing everyone for no reason, with no purpose in life. Yep, that was a big bunch of fun. Let's have a look-see at some of the more recent codes my elves have devised. This is, obviously, a list of game shark codes and the games that they will work for. If you don't have the capacity to figure this one out, pause your VCR so you can write them all down. Remember, for a freaking decent time, check www.gameshark.com and get all the latest codes, as well as my immature rantings. Now back to you, Chet, or whoever you are. Thanks, Code Boy. You rock. Who's Chet? I don't know. Finally, Play This is our segment for reviewing games that have already made it to your local video game emporium. To give you their certified opinions on the holiday's biggest hits, here's the staff of Game Informer magazine. Hope no one gets hurt this time. Yeah. You have to play Metal Gear Solid, there's no doubt you, you have to play Metal Gear Solid. Tenshu is probably a better game, but it's going to be more underground, it's going to be a little bit you know, it's going to be just like for people that really want to play a game and like master it. Well, Metal Gear Solid's more mainstream and we'll definitely. So we're going to find out Tenchu 2 is bogged down with three hours of cinematics. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be like Metal well, Gear Solid. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be upset if they put, you know, a bunch of cinematics in there. It's just, you know, it's kind of a perfect mix between the two. You need more gameplay. Like Metal Gear needs more gameplay. How did you like that? Tenshu probably could use a little bit more, you know, finish on it so that it's a little bit better, you know, as far as like, just the layout, you know, like people like movies, people like getting that kind of stuff, and Tenshu doesn't have enough of the kind of extras to make people want well, it. I don't know, I mean, you get, Tenshu, I mean, you go for Grandmaster to get the secret items, like, you know, the stealth, you know, the, the new armor and all that stuff. Metal Gear, I mean, you just, you just kind of play to see what happens next. Tenshu, you got all that, you know, the replay value of getting everything and, the and random finding out stuff. how it works. Yeah, exactly. The three exactly. different paths. Yeah. yeah that's, that's very cool. I think Revenge is an awesome grappling simulator. Grappling <laughs> simulator? <laughs> it's cool. I mean, they, it's, it's kind of the same play control as the first one, but what they've done with the intros and the special moves and the colors and everything, it just kicks butt. Well, there's only one thing you can say. It's, press up on your face, <laughs> action! <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's crazy. No warrior, from what we know. It's just too bad. But uh, yeah, but there's so many other wrestlers. In there. That game yeah, the is game just loaded to the hilt with yeah. tons of different people to play as. It's not that much different from last year's, but no. but all the new wrestlers just kicks butt. It's Four awesome. player action. It's awesome. Killer. Yeah, multiplayer is yeah. awesome. Forty player battle royale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's awesome. Though. It's huge. Rush 2 you know? definitely blows away any of the cruising games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And people buy that thing and it's a piece of junk. It makes them look like <laughs> relics. Yeah. I'd buy that game for one reason. Stunt, the stunt horse. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Skate park it's for awesome. car. <laughs> Pulling off tricks. Bang, bang, bang. It's awesome. I think the racing part stinks, though. Oh, and it's still so much. It's like no. the only time you can take a car out and like just cruise down some road and go way, way too fast off some off and just destroy it and then go like, oh, yeah. It's not as extreme, though, as the, the one before. I mean, it doesn't oh, seem like insane. it has. I mean, if it didn't have that stunt it's mode, insane. it doesn't have it. Twisted Edge yeah, snowboarding. snowboarding. That game's horrible. Like, yeah, it's like the game was created by Lucifer himself. <laughs> Just to talk. <laughs> Playing that game is like the guy in Clockwork Orange with the toothpicks in his eyes. You're like forced to play this game. like, no, this is terrible. The best part about this game is I don't have to ever play it again. Yes. <laughs> All right. What do you think? Duke coming out from behind the camera. It's kind of it, weak. Yeah. It's, it's got kind of the closet, so to speak. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider thing. You know? It's a good Tomb Raider. It's exactly like Tomb Raider. Looks, when you're watching, it looks just like jump. I like the combat a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, the combat is better. And they're kind of like going to that kind of yeah, the zoom cam thing is cool. And the, uh, I mean, these weapons. He's got a lot better weapons. Than the Holy the hand grenade. It's yeah. a great addition yeah. to his weapon. And his, his the Dukeisms, man. Hard he's hysterical. Just, he's just rude. Give me some sugar. Who would you compare him to? What uh, movie or movie star? 
all adult films. If you had to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had it's to like mention Brian the Bosworth in the porn. <laughs> Brian, Brian Jeremy. <laughs> but how about okay, streak. You played that game? You played streak. That game? It's, it's cool. intense. That game is awesome. It's like Jet Moto, but you can spin faster. It moves faster. Looks better. I mean, this one, you're just hauling ass. This is just so much fun to just sit there and do flips and spins all the time. But does a confidence meter suck, do you think? I mean, no, I've it no the confidence meter is really cool. I mean, it can really throw you off. Your guy just kind of takes off after you land a huge trip. The controls are a little different, a little tighter. Yeah. But the but bottom the, line is it's, I mean, if you like Jet Moto, you're going to love Street. Yeah, single track. It, it is made for the Jet Moto fan. You know, they get paid for that. Wow. <laughs> hey, well, thanks for watching Fuse. Next time, we'll have the 411 on more new games, plus a trip to the Tokyo Game Show. Hi. Later, gamers. See ya.